Hello, hello. Good morning from Canada, everyone. I hope you're doing well. Happy Wednesday to all of you. And I am back on this YouTube channel for another live English lesson. If you are new here, if this is your first time, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you as a subscriber. And if you are already here watching, uh, introduce yourself in the chat room. Let me know where you're watching from. Say hello. I'm going to go to the chat room in a little while to say hello to everyone, and I also have some questions for you, but we're going to get started right away. So what are we doing today? Today we're going to look at three English jokes that were told by the famous comedian, filmmaker, writer. He really has done a whole bunch of different things, uh, and his name is Woody Allen. So we're going to look at three jokes that Woody Allen told. They're nice, short little jokes. Uh, we're going to practice some grammar from these jokes, and I'm going to try to help you understand them. Comedy is one of the most difficult things to learn as an English language learner, because a lot of comedy has to do with subtlety and how language is used in subtle ways to create different meanings. So let's look at these jokes. Like I said, we're going to get started right away. And let me just switch screens here before we do. Okay, here we go. So jokes for learning <laughs> jokes for learning English by Woody Allen. Joke number one. You can live to be a hundred if you give up all the things that make you want to live to be a hundred. Okay, so let's talk about this for a moment here. We're we have a phrasal verb that I want to talk about, and that is give up. Now, many of you might know what give up means. It can mean a few different things, but my doctor told me that I should give up smoking. There's an example of another sentence using give up. And basically what it means is you should stop doing something. If you stop doing something, in particular something bad, you give that thing up. Okay, so for many people, smoking is something they want to give up. They want to stop doing it. I gave up eating meat last year. So some people choose to be vegetarians. If you want to be a vegetarian, you have to give up eating meat. You stop eating meat. I'm thinking about giving up drinking alcohol. I'm thinking about stopping, I'm thinking about not drinking alcohol anymore. So that's what that means. Now, what is this joke about? Well, he's talking about living to be a hundred. You can live to be 100 if you give up, so if you stop doing all of the things that make you want to live to be a hundred. So what is the second half of this quote about? Well, a lot of the time in life, we some, sometimes things that are very bad for us are things that are very fun to do. So for example, eating chocolate all the time, or eating pizza, or eating really unhealthy food. Those things are fun, but you can't do them too much, or else well, there will be terrible consequences. It's very unhealthy to do those things. Same with drinking alcohol, and going to parties, and smoking, and many of the things that we enjoy doing in life that make life fun for us will also kill us if we do them too much. And that's what the joke is talking about here. He says, you can live to be a hundred if you stop doing all of the things that make life fun, basically. Of course, he's being funny, he's a comedian, uh, but that's what the joke is about. So, in the comment section, let me know, what do you think is the most important thing you need in life in order to live to 100 years? Now, don't say health, don't say good health, because that's obvious. Of course, you need good health to live to 100 years. Try to pick one important thing that you need. Maybe it's a close relationship with your family. Maybe it's exercising every day, who knows? But try to pick one thing that you think is the most important thing that you need in order to live to be 100 years old. And let me jump over to the comment section and say hello to everyone for the first time. All right, we have quite a few people watching. Ashrafel Islam, hello to you. Rosangela Silva, bra. Patricia is here from France. T 
Taylor from Korea. Hello, Taylor. Nice to see you again. Vivian, Nim is watching. RJ is here. Dea, Precious Madel Santos from Lebanon. Nye is watching. New Saiba. Ashrafel Islam. Fantastic to see you from Bangladesh. Very cool. Okay. Nijar, Mai Mai, Elil Da Costa, Shazia, and I'm sorry if I missed anyone else. Mariano, live a hundred like a song of Queen who wants to live forever. Nim Green says, I need close friends if I can live to 100 years. Yeah, I think that's extremely important. I would agree with you, Nim. Close friends are very important to have if you want to live to be 100 years old. Grace says, oh my, I don't want to live 100 years. <laughs> Grace, why not? Giacinto watching from Italy. Walk every day at least five miles, says Dea. Yeah, that will certainly help. Vivian says, knowledge acquisition. Interesting. <laughs> I don't know if knowledge acquisition will make you live to be 100, although... My grandma's in her 80s, and she reads more than anyone I've ever known. But I think it also upsets her, too, sometimes, that knowledge can be distressing to have knowledge. Uh, Nye says, keep in touch with my friends from JEC. Oh, that's very sweet. Nye? JEC, by the way, is Jacob's English Club. The link to join is below. And members of JEC will receive a bonus quiz for this lesson after the lesson is complete. I'll talk about that a little later. Taylor says, I think eating Greek yogurt every day is the most important to live long. Interesting. Patricia says, love. Hannah says, thinking positive. It's an important thing in life. All very important things, I think. Let's keep going. So that was joke number one. And I hope you guys understand the humor. If you're watching this lesson, if you don't understand the humor involved, just say in the comment section, I don't understand why this is funny, and I will try to explain it to you. Again, humor is one of the most difficult things to understand uh, if English is not your first language. Same when I was in Korea and when I was studying Korean, humor was very difficult for me to understand. Okay, so let me know if you're confused, and I will try to explain everything to you again. Let's keep going. Okay, joke number two. Sex without love is a meaningless experience. But as far as meaningless experiences go, it's pretty damn good. <laughs> okay, so what is he talking about here? I wanted to focus on one grammar point actually from this, but let's talk about the quote as a whole, the joke as a whole before that. So he's saying sex without love is a meaningless experience. Now, what do we think of meaningless experiences? They're meaningless for one, and we often think that they, we don't value them really at all. They're not, they're, they're not really considered good things to have. All of us want to have meaning in our lives. So meaningless experiences, we don't really think of as a good thing. But of course he's saying, as far as meaningless experiences go, it's pretty damn good. So he's contrasting the two things here. This is why this is funny. Uh, we don't really think of meaningless experiences as something that, as, as things that are good. But here he's saying, yeah, but it's, it's meaningless, but it's pretty damn good too. So that's the joke here. Now let's look at this as far as meaningless experiences go. This is a very common form that you will see in spoken English, more so than in writing. As far as something goes means regarding that thing. And again, it's, it's hard to describe this. I was trying to uh, type it out last night and explain it. You always need a context for it. So for example, it's supposed to rain this weekend. So as far as camping goes, I don't think we're going to go. Imagine a couple that has planned to go camping but the weather is not looking so great and they decide that they aren't going to go camp in it, camping anymore. As far as camping goes, just means regarding camping. 
Okay, you could replace as far as blah, blah, blah goes with regarding this one thing. It's, it looks really fancy, it looks difficult, but it's not. It just means speaking about that one thing or regarding that one thing, and then you continue the sentence. Here's another example. He found out that she was cheating on him. As far as their relationship goes, I think it's over. As far as blah, blah, blah goes, I think this or this happens. So again, it just means regarding their, or regarding that thing. Here's an example that I want you to complete in the comment section, actually. Well, one more example for you. As far as the car goes, you can have it. You might hear someone say that. And of course, if they're speaking about this fancy, I think it's a Lamborghini, this fancy Lamborghini in the picture here, then that would be a nice thing to hear someone say if that person was speaking to you. Okay. So I want you to finish the sentence here. I have a paragraph for you. Imagine that your partner is in a band. His band is playing their first show tonight and he really wants you to attend. You also want to go, but you just got a call from your boss. Something very important has come up and your boss needs you to go to the office immediately. How would you tell your partner that you won't be able to attend the show and try to use as far as blah, blah, blah goes in your response, okay? <clears throat> okay, Vivian says, I don't understand why this is funny. Uh, and you're speaking about, I assume you're speaking about the second joke about meaningless sex, so sex without love. He's saying that sex without love is meaningless. It doesn't mean anything. It's not really, if you have sex with someone and you don't love them, it is not important. It's meaningless. And actually, this is going to be different from different cultures. In the West over here, where I'm from, People actually do that quite often. There are all sorts of dating applications these days, and people will sign on to their dating applications. They'll go on a date with someone very casually, and sometimes they'll have sex even on the first date. And you would typically consider that sex without love. They don't love each other. They're just having sex. Uh, so that's kind of a me. He's saying sex without love, that kind of sex, that, that kind of experience, is meaningless but as far as meaningless experiences go it's pretty good he's saying physically it feels pretty good so it, he's saying it's a bad thing to do it's not maybe he's not saying that he's not he's saying it's meaningless it's not very important but it feels pretty good that's kind of the joke here he's contrasting the two I hope that makes sense <laughs> okay Nitin Jadhav says, hello, this is Padma from India. Glad to catch your live lesson. I think our mindset is very important to live to 100 years. If you are old and weak, yes, I think so too. I don't know if it's usual in other countries, but in my country, it's still sacred religion, maybe. Having contact with a precious person is more sacred than a stranger. Yeah, I think, Grace, I think that Woody Allen would agree with you. I think that's what he's saying in this quote. He's definitely suggesting that it's more meaningful to have sex with someone that you love. So I think he's agreeing with you. I also definitely think you're right about the cultural thing. Casual sex is probably much more common in the West over here. People meet and very casually get together. Uh, I probably agree with you. I don't think that's a very good thing. Um, but he, what he's joking about here is that it feels physically, in a very kind of stupid way, it feels very good. And that's what he's joking about here. Taylor says, as far as today's show goes, I'll have to miss it because of my boss. Perfect. Perfect sentence, Taylor. Very nice. 
As far as that show goes, I don't think I will be able to attend, says Nusaiba. Perfect. As far as the show slash concert goes, it is going to be amazing slash awesome. Even without my attendance, I'm so sorry that I won't, won't be able to be there for you. Very nice, Vivian. Awesome sentence. I'm sorry, but as far as the band goes, I can't go there with you. Very cool. Great, so I'm glad you guys understand this because it's kind of a weird saying in English, but you hear it quite often when people are speaking together. I say it all the time with my friends. <laughs> as far as my work goes, I won't be able to attend your show, honey. As far as my work goes. You could say because of my work, I won't be able to attend your show. Patricia, that would be better. Because of my work, I won't be able to attend your show, honey. Okay, let's keep going to the last joke. Quote number three. If you want to make God laugh, tell him about your plans. Okay, so why is this funny? What is he talking about here? Well, what this joke is really speaking about, I think, is how a lot of the time what happens to us in life is beyond our control. So things happen in life. Uh, we, we always we make a bunch of different plans, and sometimes something can happen like that, and our plans completely change. Something happens to us beyond our control. Some would say that's God's plan. So he's saying if you want to make God laugh, tell him about your plans, because he probably has different plans, and he doesn't care about your plans. So again, let me know if that's confusing why it's why it's funny. But we're going to do some conditional practice here. So if you notice, it's a conditional sentence that's in the imperative mood too. If blah, 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 then do this. So let's look at some examples. And at the end of this lesson, I have some pictures that I want you to caption for me. Okay, if you want to play video games, finish your homework. Imagine a dad with his son over here, in the, like in this picture. This, the kid really wants to play video games, but the dad says, you have to finish your homework first. Well, one way he could say that is, if you want to play video games, finish your homework. Here's another example. If you can meet on Saturday, let me know. Now I phrase, I, I use a phrase similar to this all the time when I'm trying to make plans with my friends or I, I use let me know all the time and you'll hear native speakers use it very often. So maybe I'll text my friends and say, if you can get together this weekend, let me know. If you'd like to talk on the phone, let me know. If you'd like to Skype, let me know. Okay, so again, it's just mixing that conditional in the imperative mood. Okay, so here's the final challenge of the day for you. And I want you to write the caption for this photo. I have two more that we'll practice with, but write the caption and try to use this kind of sentence. I believe this is the first conditional in the imperative mood. So if blah, 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 and then do this in the imperative mood. Try to create a sentence in that way about this picture. So you can write this from the woman's point of view, you can write this from the man's point of view, but caption the photo. I'm looking forward to reading your captions. Shazia says, as far as the shows goes, would be as far as the show goes, Hopefully you are doing your best performance. You could say, as far as the show goes, I wish you all the best. My best wishes are with you. Because God had plans for us. Exactly, Ken. I've heard of this one a couple of times. Oh, very cool. Yeah, he's, he's very famous. It was quite difficult, actually, to... Um, it, early, especially early in his career, too, he started as a comedy writer, Woody Allen, and he wrote many short jokes like this that are kind of one-liners we would say in English and it was difficult to only choose three okay here we go precious Madel Santos says if you leave me I'll go crazy 
Gray says, if you want to ride with me, bring your own helmet. <laughs> if you don't want me to sit on your bike, let me know. I assume the girl saying that, or maybe the guy saying that, I don't know. Nitin, we human think we are great, but God has always some surprise for you, so never be rigid and take life as it comes. Yes. If you want freedom, do not have a relationship. <laughs> Bonus points for making me laugh with that one, brah. Gazi says, if you want to go with me, you have to forget your family. Ooh, powerful. Mariano says, if you let me go with you, I will show you the paradise. You could get rid of the paradise there and just say paradise. I will show you paradise. Nusaiba, if you want me to ride with you, promise me you won't drive fast. Nice. If you're going to fly away, let me have this motorcycle, says Taylor. Nice, I like it. Nim says, if you want to come with me, change your dress first. You guys are all comedians today. Perhaps it's the spirit of this video and of Woody Allen. These are some funny sentences. If you buy, if you buy a car, then I'll go with you. If you want to elope with me, let's go on the motorcycle and go to the place where we can live happily ever after. Very nice. All right, let's go on to the next one. And it seems like you under you guys understand this grammar very well, the first conditional and the imperative mood. <laughs> Grace says, if you want to ride a bike, please do wear jeans. If you are serious about our relationship, take me with you. And I'm glad you're enjoying the lesson, Mariano. <laughs> so let me know about this picture. We have a cat and a mouse. The mouse seems unaware that the cat is right there looking at it. <laughs> Mariana says, I catch you. I will catch you. Food. If you want to kill me, catch me at first. Patricia, you could say, if you want to kill me, catch me first. Get, you can get rid of at there and it would be good. If you run, you can escape. Close, bra, but put it in the imperative mood. If you want to escape, run. You could say that's kind of a weird sentence, though. Playing hide and seek. Good. You guys remember, though, put this in the first conditional, the imperative mood. If you want, if blah, 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 then do this thing. If you want to have a great ride, hold me tight and I will show you paradise. I think that is probably in regard to the last picture. Maybe not with the cat and the mouse. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the last one here. And again, try to write this in the first conditional. So Let's see, there's a lot that you could say about this one. They're at a coffee shop together. You could write this from the woman's perspective, from the man's perspective, or from the dog's perspective. Okay, so here's an example. If you were writing from the dog's perspective, you could say, and so imagine I'm the dog right now, you could say, if you want me to be happy, take me for a walk. <laughs> write a sentence like that. I know they're difficult. Vivian says, 
If you think I didn't see you hiding in the other side trying to catch me, then you are making a fool out of yourself and bite me. Interesting. <laughs> Taylor says, if you keep looking at me like that, I won't take a selfie with you. Maybe that's all the cat wants is a selfie with the mouse. If you want to eat, you'll have to hunt. You guys know your conditionals well. You're using all sorts of different forms here, so that's fantastic. Ghazi says, <laughs> if you look at the dog's reaction, it's really boring. I think you'd want to say bored, Grace. The dog looks bored. And yeah, I think that, what is that, a pug? Pugs look bored all the time. Ghazi says, I would be, I would be die. Ghazi, you just want to say, I would die if I got out alone. Uh, I think I know what you're trying to say in regard to the cat. Or you're writing from the mouse's perspective. And I think you're trying to say, I would die if I went out alone. Because if the mouse goes out, the catch, the, the cat will catch it. If you want to have a great time, come and join us. Come and join us. You don't need with. Good. Cristiano. Hey, guys. If you don't mind, I want my bone. Nice. If you sleep now, I, dr I will drink your coffee, I think you're trying to say. If the coffee is too hot, cool it down for me. Nice, Taylor. Very good. Very creative. Precious Medell, if you want to have a good company, let's have some coffee. If you want good company, if you want to have good company is okay too, let's have some coffee together. If you think you are smart, you are not smarter than me. <laughs> you could say Shazia. All right. Well, I'm actually quite impressed by how well you guys know your conditionals because you are mixing all different types in there which is fantastic. And as I said earlier, if you are a member of JEC, I know that some of my students are watching, there is a bonus quiz for JEC members, uh, and I will post that on our website later today. By the end of the day, it will be up and available on our website. Uh, and if you would like to become a member of JEC, the link to do so is in the description of this video. And that is all I have to say for you today, guys. So thank you for being with me here on this lovely Wednesday. I hope that you're all having a fantastic week and great work today. We, we, we did a lot of work together, so that was a lot of fun. You guys did really well. I will see you next week. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.